a piece of aluminum. Your question is, and it tells you also, when copper is bonded to something, it turns blue. That's why the solution is blue. What are the two elements that are bonded with copper chloride? Chlorine. Copper and chlorine. What color is copper normally? Like a brownish red. What color is chlorine? Anyone know? It's a clear, oh, it's clear, a clear gas, colorless gas. But when it's put with the copper, it's going to turn blue um, um, liquid. All right. So your question that you have on your paper is what type of energy and chemical reaction will occur between aluminum and copper chloride? Now, we needed to fix something on there. Give me just a moment so this can focus. This is not the time to start talking. All right. So you have this sheet here. Like I said, the blue liquid that you're going to get looks like this. And you're also going to get a piece of aluminum. But your question here is what type of energy and chemical reaction you should have crossed out or you should be crossing out and chemical, and just looking at what type of energy reaction uh, will occur between aluminum and copper chloride. Now, there's two types of energy reactions that we learn. Two types of energy reactions. Quatoria, tell me them. Endothermic and exothermic. So your hypothesis should be doing what? Raise your hand and tell me. So it should be answering the... Question. The question using endothermic or exothermic. It's an educated guess. There is no right or wrong answer to this unless you're not answering this question. All right, any questions about that? Okay, then your hypothesis you should be completing. Let's move down to our materials. Like I said, you're going to be getting a safe dish with uh, copper chloride, and you're going to be getting a piece of aluminum foil, which is the pure element aluminum. You also will need your periodic table. Your periodic table is in your notes, so you will have that with you as well. You will be flipping back and forth through your notes because you'll have to be looking at a couple of areas because this lab is set up as a review of stuff that we've learned as well as um, giving you a hands-on experience, experience to have here. All right, so right now I'm going to be calling up groups so that you can get your materials. While you're waiting to get your materials, let me give you your next task. If we look down in this chart here, it says record information about copper in the below chart. Cross off copper, and it should say record information about the elements. So make sure your paper says record information about the elements. And then the three elements that we're dealing with are Aluminum, uh, copper, chlorine. and chlorine. In this first box, you are going to write the element symbol. In the second box, you're going to write the type of element. Now, before you go on with that, there are three types of elements that you've learned. Look through your notes and raise your hand when you find the three types of elements. Joel. Metalloid. So he told me you have metal, non-metal, and metalloid. From your notes, where are metals located on the periodic table? On the left side. And I'm just going to put PT for periodic table. Where are non-metals located? On the left, well, let me go back. On the left side of what, though? Because there has to be a, there has to be something on the periodic table that tells us the left, huh? Of the steps. And where are non-metals located? On the right side of the steps. And what about metalloids? No. 
along the steps. So when you have a, you have that staircase right on the periodic table, and that staircase is separating your non-metals from your metals, but along the staircase, these are the elements. These are, these were elements. I will be circling them along the staircase. These are your metalloids. Okay, so back to your lab. In this box here, you are going to be typing the element symbol. In this box here, you are going to be writing the type of element. In this box here, you are going to be identifying some things that you use in your everyday life that you use this element for or this uh, these elements may be in. Does that make sense? Okay, and in the last box, you are going to be describing the element, its state of matter. Is it a solid, liquid, or gas? What color is it? How does it feel? How does it look? So right now, you're going to be working with your group, completing this chart as I pass out the materials. Put your hand down. You can't have a question right now. No, I don't have anything for you. Right now. All right, group one. You guys will be group one. No, just one. Two. Let me have your attention. 
looking up here, you should have filled out these four boxes. I'm going to look at this one with you just really quickly. Aluminum. Someone raise your hand and describe aluminum to me. Joelle. Silver. It's silver. It's in the boron family. It's in the boron family. Okay, good. Jaden. Shiny. It's a metal. It's a metal, not. You have to put it here. If it's a metal or a non-metal or a metalloid, it's not a metal. It's a metalloid. It's along the steps. It's a metalloid. It's along the steps. All right. Moving down to copper. Someone give me the color of copper. Close that Chromebook now. Kanisha, it's brownish red. Brownish red, bronze, but I like brownish red. Chlorine, what did we say it was? Blue or clear? No. It's a colorless gas. It is in bleach, it is in the pool, but it, it turns into a liquid when you add it to certain things. All right, let's move down our sheet. Number two, aluminum is an element. So what type of substance is aluminum? Let's underline the word element. So this question is really asking what type of substance is an element? Get in your notes and find what type of substance an element is. Everyone get in your notes and find out what type of substance an element is. I don't want the answer. I want you to write it down. All right, moving on. You should be writing your own answer down. I'm not going to give you the answer to all of this. This is a lab, and at this point, you should be able to develop the answers. All right, moving to number two. Copper chloride is a compound made of two elements. Which two elements are they? Write it down. No, no, don't ask me if I said what. I just read, read question three. Answer it. All right, listen up. Number four gives us instructions. We're not going to do it yet. I'm going to lay out all the instructions, and then you're going to go ahead and do it. But in a moment, you're going to be folding your, um, well, actually, you can do this right now. Fold your aluminum in half, and then in half again just to give make a little square. That's all you're trying to do is make a little square. It's not that difficult. It takes three seconds. And then put it down, because we're not doing anything with it yet. For number five, this first sentence, cross it out. So it should just read, as the reaction proceeds. So cross off the first sentence. Then it says, as the reaction proceeds, record as many observations in the after reaction chart on the back of this sheet. So in a moment, we're going to flip this over. But you're going to try not to include any interpretations, meaning only write what you observe. How do you observe things? You look at it or you touch it or smell it or hear it or taste it. So use your five senses only. When you're using your five senses, no, we're not going to do that. I'm just giving you an example of what we're talking about. When you're using your five senses to observe something, you don't make interpretations. So if you were to see something that was red, you would just say, it is red. You wouldn't say, it looks ugly, because that's an interpretation. It is not what you are observing for everyone else to see. Then we're going to clean up. But let me flip over your paper so that you can write down how you're observing. Let's look at the back. All right, here it says, 
what did you observe? What did you see? What did you smell? We're going to cross off that and say, um, write C with the question mark. So you're going to be looking, writing down what you saw. You're going to write down what you heard. So you're going to listen for some things. You should be writing this on the back. And you're going to write down what you felt. And when I say feel or felt, you are not going to open this container and put your hand inside because it could hurt you. You are going to keep this container closed. Once you put the foil in, this container is going to be closed and you're going to keep it closed. But you are going to touch the outside and pass it around. So when you get, when we put the foil in the container, everyone's going to look at it so that everyone can see. Pay attention. Then everyone's going to have an opportunity to hold it, hold it to your ear so that you can hear. And then touch it so that you can feel and write down what you see, heard, and felt. All right? Then you're going to get in your notes and you're going to write down evidence of a chemical reaction. That is in your notes. So you need to use your notes and write down evidence only from this lab of a chemical reaction. Do you understand? Any questions? No. Okay. And let's look back. We can keep it on the back. We can keep it on the back. And let's go ahead and open it up. You can open the container. I'm going. Make sure before we're not dropping in yet. When we drop it in, we are not talking and saying, "Oh, it looks like this." You are only writing down what you see, what you heard, and what you felt. No interpretations. I'm going to leave mine open so that whoever's watching on the screen, they can see everything that's happening. But I'm going to go ahead and drop mine in now. So be ready. Let's drop yours in, and you put the top right back on. Put your top on. And let it sit in the middle of the table so that everyone can see first. Give it a let it sit in the middle of the table. Write down what you see. Everyone write down what you see. Then one person pick it up, put it to your ear, and touch it so you can write down what you heard and what you felt. Is it cold or hot? It's gotten hot. If you're watching this video, you should write down that it feels hot. It is bubbling and sizzling. You should write down that's right here. It is turning a reddish bronze color. So you should write down that's what you see. It's changing your color. Make sure everyone's had an opportunity to hear it and feel it. What did I just say? <laughs> now that you had an opportunity to observe it, you need to be looking in your notes and writing down evidence of a chemical reaction. So get in your notes and find evidence. You wrote down about six or seven of them, I believe. And you need to write down the ones that apply to this lab. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to give you another two minutes to write down your evidence, and then we're moving on. All right, eyes up here. If you didn't finish it, you'll be have time to go back through it. I want to go and explain the rest of the lab so that you can have time to finish it and turn it in today. All right. Now, looking at question one on the analysis question, it says, what are the reactants for this lab? Well, let's take a look first up here and talk about some things. What did we say was just a short way of explaining a chemical reaction? What can we write down that an equation? Thank you, very good. And what separates the equation, the, the left side and the right side? The yield. And what is, does the yield sign look like? It's, it's, an it's an arrow. Good. So you have an arrow, and then you have the right side of the arrow and the left side of the arrow. What's on the left side of the arrow? The reactants. What's on the right side? The product. Very good. So the, get, someone raise your hand and give me your definition of what reactants are. Quatoria. The elements that you are bonding together, right, that you are combining together. Good. What is the product? Okay. What happens to the elements? What you end up with, correct? All right, so then your question asks, what are the reactants for this lab? I don't want you to raise your hand. I want you to go ahead and answer it. What are the, number one, what are the reactants for this lab? Sometimes, what type of symbols are on this side sometimes? Sometimes, what type of symbol is on this side? A plus sign sometimes could be on that side. So make sure you're using words if, because you, you probably don't know the formulas. All right, let's move on to, eyes up here. Let's move on to number two. Number two asks, what color was, what color was one of the substances produced after the reaction? We're talking about the most prominent substance, the very obvious color. What color was that? Reddish brown. Well, we don't want to say rust, really, because rust is actually a substance. Oh, Reddish brown is a color. Right. 
from the elements used for this lab, so the reactants, what element was part of this product? What do you think this product was? Raise your hand. It wasn't copper chloride. Copper chloride was blue. That's what we started with. So what do you think that reddish brown stuff is? Copper. Copper. You told me copper was reddish brown. It is part of the equation, so that is your product. Is that copper? Now, before we go on, I want to make it clear in understanding that you did not start off with copper by itself, did you? But did you end up with copper by itself? So moving on to your next question, in a chemical reaction, what happens to the particles between reactants? Do not raise your hand. You can look at your notes, and particularly, you might want to look at your crossword puzzle. <clears throat> I, I put them back there for Talia to hand them back, but they're in your notes. It's too late. You do have this information in your notes also, probably page 27 or 28. Oh, actually, it's 34. 27, 28, and 34 has it. And 35. What's the title? There may be some stuff on there. Here's a hint. Think about what you saw in the video lesson with the bumping cars. Good job, Amir. Stop. Stop. Gentlemen, stop. All right, I'm not giving you the answer. You're going to be looking in your notes. Let's move on. You can find it. You still have time to work. You can find it afterwards. Number four. Remember. When you just did the lab, you did not start off with copper by itself, correct? But you did end up with it, correct? So in a chemical reaction, what happens to the bonds during chemical reactions? This is also on page 27 and 28 of your notes. Put it down and we get it. I like the way these groups are looking in their notes. Um, group five, you're never going to get anything done if you don't get your notes out. Again, you will have time to continue working on this, but I want to move on so I can keep explaining it so that you can get back to work and stay working. All right, let's look at number five. Thinking about what you just saw, heard, or felt, 
Was energy present in this reaction? You're going to answer yes or no. Go ahead and do that now. And then answer the question, how do you know? And if you say energy was present, write what type of energy reaction it was. If you say energy was not present, write what type of energy reaction it was. I'm sorry, if you say energy was present, write what type of energy reaction you think that it was. I love the conversation going on over there. I love the conversation going on here. Good conversation over here. Good conversation. All right. Lastly, I'm going to explain the last part so that you can get to work, and then I'll give you the time limit that it needs to be turned in. But let's look up here. You have a conclusion. I want to fix the statement that's here for the conclusion. It says, answer the problem, cross off the words, and write a balanced equation. So again, cross off the words and write a balanced equation. In the conclusion, it's bolded at the bottom. So the sentence now reads, answer the problem for what happened in the lab. Include energy on the appropriate side of the equation. So it tells you the below equation is the chemical equation that represents what you observed. That's this equation here. This is what you observed. And remember, a chemical equation is just a shorthand way of explaining a um, chemical, reaction. chemical reaction. Very good. You're going to count the atoms. Remember when you're counting the atoms, you are separating it with a line, separating the reactants from the products. Then you'll count the atoms by listing the elements. After that, you're going to tell whether it is balanced or not, yes or no. Then based on your observations, that means what you heard, what you saw, and what you felt, you're going to add energy to the appropriate side of the equation. When you are finished with that, there are two questions here that you must answer. Any questions on what you're supposed to be doing? Okay, you have 15 minutes to be working. When you are finished, turn it into the basket. <laughs>